This house that you guys are looking at right behind me is Hyman Ross House from back in The Godfather Part 2. And I recently re-watched this movie and it made me think, hey, that looks like Miami. And sure enough it is. Where's Hyman Ross House? It's right down the street from where I live. How cool is that? Looks a lot different today than it did back in the movie, but you can still see it's the same house. They did lots of renovations here. And surprisingly, it's not a flip. They bought it back in 2011 for $475,000. So back when the home prices here were somewhat fair, especially considering this is a waterfront house. That's where Michael Corleone came to visit Hyman Roth in the movie. So any Godfather fans out there, I'm sure would appreciate that. Now, even though the price for Hyman Roth's house might have been right back in the day, it actually is wrong for everybody else alive today. And that was a pretty good rhyme, wasn't it? <laughs> well, it turns out that even right now, even if mortgage rates were to drop to 5%, let's say, housing would still be unaffordable, okay? And a lot of people have been saying, oh, well, when, when interest rates come down to 5%, that's when we're gonna see the deluge of listings come on the market and everything get resuscitated back to where it was before. So yeah, would 5% interest rates make housing more affordable than it is right now? Absolutely. Is it enough to make it affordable for the average person to purchase? No. Hey, I'm sure you guys missed him. Our good old friend, the leaf blower's back, making an appearance in today's video. Now, I found this interesting story that talks about if it wasn't for the supply constraints that we have on the housing market, then home prices would actually be a lot lower than they are right now. But the most recent Case Shiller Home Price Index reading came in at 3.9% higher than a year ago as of September's data. And the Case Shiller Home Price Index is always about two to three months lagging behind the current date, considering we're already almost in December now. But here's the problem. The Case Shiller Home Price Index going up by 3.9% year over year is not the whole story. Because like I was saying earlier, even if mortgage rates were to drop to 5% today, the majority of homes on the market would still be unaffordable for the average Joe. Because according to the National Association of Realtors Housing Affordability Index, single family homes at these prices have not been this unaffordable since 1985, okay? That was before I was even born. That was two years before I was born. So you're talking 38 years ago was the last time homes were this unaffordable relative to prices and people's incomes. And this is where I'm getting this information from in that if mortgage rates came down to 5% today, that it would still be too expensive. The unaffordability would still be out of whack. When we look at the September data from the National Association of Realtors Home Price Affordability Index, it suggests that the median price home is still 50% too costly to be considered affordable for the average household. Think about that, guys. So they're saying that homes right now across the board are essentially 50% overpriced and too expensive for people to afford. Well, then how are people still buying them, right? That's pretty much the obvious question. Well, the reality is they're not, guys, because the home sales and the pending sales are at also at the lowest levels than we have seen in a very long time. And the reason for that is because people can't afford to buy these houses, but there's always going to be somebody out there who can. That's why we're still seeing the home prices go higher. So what this data suggests, even if mortgage rates came down to 5% right now, we would still need to see incomes go up by 25% or home prices go down by 25%. So which one of those things do you think is most likely to happen in this scenario? I'm putting my money on probably home prices going down because the odds of people getting a 25% pay increase over the next couple years is slim to none. Even in these high inflationary times, people only got a 5% raise over the past year, guys. That's not even close to what we need to see in order for things to turn around. Now they do go on to say that home prices rarely ever come down by 25%, which is in fact true because the only time in recent history that that has happened is with the 2008 housing market crash. But to think because an event is rare to say that it will never happen again is not true, guys. Just because something's rare doesn't mean it can't happen. And to me, one of the things that puts it in favor of happening again is the fact that everything is so far out of whack right now compared to what would normally be considered normal, right? We have massive amount of deficit spending in our government. 
We have massive amounts of personal spending where people are spending far beyond their means, you know, going into higher debt than we've ever seen before. We have all these ridiculous programs that help people that have no business buying a home, getting into a home right now, that are putting 1%, 0% down, 3% down, whatever it is, the lowest amount possible to get into the house, which clearly isn't enough to have a real stake in, the, in that investment. And I personally just cannot see the scenario where this ends well, where all of this just kind of cleans itself up and magically we don't see a recession and magically we don't see home prices go down. And essentially there's no correction from any of this because this is a lot of bad behavior, so to speak. And if it, none of it gets corrected, then it's gonna spell disaster for a lot of people in the future. You know, a lot of people say, oh, this is gloom and doom, Michael. All you talk about is bad news. Well, ask yourself this, isn't it bad news if things also continue to go in the current direction that things are going? If everything continues to get more and more expensive every single year by a substantial amount and incomes don't keep up with it isn't that bad news also i mean come on guys i get with the program people make it sound like it's such a downer thing or such a bad thing if home prices were to go down by 25 percent or if unemployment goes up like yeah that's gonna suck for some people but for the vast majority of people it won't right and even people that become unemployed, people who are motivated and have skills will find another job, maybe even a better job, and eventually they'll be better off than they were before. And also, let's face it, businesses that fail are businesses that should be failing, right? If businesses fail, it's because they're not making the right investment decisions, they're not in the right type of business for this economy, or their prices are just too high or their service is crap. So there has to be a reason why businesses go under, and usually it's a good reason. So to say all of that is bad news and this is somehow negative, I don't see it, guys. I think it's positive news that this is on the horizon. And really, existing home sales have been on the decline for quite some time, guys. In fact, the peak month, for existing home sales was back in June of 2021, okay? And also, how is it bad news if we get more inventory and prices come down? Because the reality is the vast majority of people have a decent amount of equity in their homes right now, and even if they don't get top dollar for it, which they probably won't anymore, but even if they don't, even if they get 10% less for that house, do you think they're gonna be crying that, oh no, I, instead of making a $400,000 profit, I only made 350 grand? Like, come on guys, people are still doing very well right now as a seller. And even if prices come down, they're still gonna be doing well for quite some time. So if mortgage rates come down, a lot of the experts are saying that home prices are gonna shoot way back up again because it's gonna reignite demand and you're gonna see a lot of people pour back into real estate. But here's the problem, guys. Here's the reason why I don't think home prices can go up even if mortgage rates come down. Because of what we talked about earlier, that the vast majority of people still wouldn't be able to afford a house at these prices even if rates come down to 5%. So that suggests to me that even if you have those rates come down, then you're not gonna see a bunch of people pour back in the market because they still won't be able to afford to even be in the market to begin with, right? So there won't be room for price growth to happen. You know, where are all these buyers gonna come from if the average household can't afford these prices? That's what I wanna know. And really right now you have home builders to the rescue because home builders are really putting up these brand new houses at breakneck speeds right now. In October, with a seasonally adjusted rate, home builders applied for an estimated 968,000 permits, okay? That is huge, guys. You're talking about a million new houses that are being applied for just for the permit process right now, not including everything that's already been built and already being delivered to the market right now. And eventually those houses are gonna get built, at least most of them will. And when they do, that adds tremendously to the amount of housing supply. And right now, we only have about 1.1 million existing homes on the market for sale across the entire country, okay? But imagine, you'd be adding an extra million within the next couple of years just from building alone, excluding any sort of existing homes coming to the market. So I think that in the next two to five years, the inventory troubles are gonna be over, but it's not gonna happen overnight, just like nothing with housing happens overnight. And we didn't even talk about rentals yet. And check this out. In addition to 968,000 
building permits that have been applied for recently. We also have 980,000, almost 1 million, that's right, multifamily units under construction as of October of 2023. Only about 361,000 of them have been delivered since the beginning of 2023. So that's still a lot of places under construction, guys, and those are all apartment buildings, places for renters to live. And let's face it, the more rent prices come down, the more renting becomes attractive to the average person looking to save a buck. So I think what this is gonna do is it's ultimately going to contribute to home prices coming down because rentals are becoming more affordable. They have been over the past several months and will likely continue to get more affordable as all of this inventory gets dropped into the rental market. And when you have more and more people choosing to rent versus buy because the cost is cheaper, naturally it sucks that demand away from the purchase market and you likely just won't see as many buyers out there rushing to the doors in order to buy these houses. One thing that I do think is gonna happen that I agree with the experts on is that when mortgage rates come down, say that they drop to 5%, right? I think you're gonna see a lot of people that have these 3% mortgages put their house for sale because they've been waiting for a chance to sell. And even though 5% is higher than 3%, it's still low enough to justify taking those profits off the table, selling the house and moving to where they really want to live or upgrading their lifestyle or moving across the country, whatever it is they need to do. But because at that very same moment, we're gonna see more rentals on the market than ever before, it might suck away the demand for those houses, which could easily make prices tank. And we're not even talking about recessions here. We're not even talking about unemployment. All these other things that can easily affect that as well. And I realize that all of this is just what if, guys. It's what if this and what if that. And sometimes it's good to just brainstorm about the future and think about where things might go. You know, not every single video and every single thing that we talk about here has to be based on you know, this is exactly what's gonna happen because nobody knows exactly what's gonna happen. So sometimes it's fun to speculate on where things might go based on the current trends. But the prices of new homes right now are completely in the tank. In fact, they're at this very moment of me recording this, they're down 18% year over year, okay? So we talked about the Case-Shiller Home Price Index. That only applies to existing homes. That's up 3.9% year over year. But simultaneously, we have the price of new homes down 18% year over year. But guess what? The home builders are the ones who are selling the most houses right now, right? These guys are thriving while the existing home sale market is not. And why is that? It's because they give massive incentives for people and they eat it up. They buy the houses. That's some serious Christmas decorations. And so what I think this indicates is this is probably going to be what the future holds for existing home sales. Okay, if new homes are giving away all these massive incentive programs, mortgage rate buy downs, price cuts, free upgrades to the home, etc. In order to get people in, why do they have to do that? Well, because the supply of new homes is a lot higher than existing homes, right? It's about at six to seven months of supply right now. So you could argue that if you're looking to buy a new home, it's a buyer's market. But if you're looking to buy an existing home, it's still a seller's market. But what happens when that dynamic gets flipped upside down? You think the current existing home sale market is going to continue commanding these prices? No, absolutely not. They're either gonna to have to resort to the same tactics that the home builders are right now with all these incentives to buy the house, or they're gonna to have to lower the price, guys. And typically, most regular sellers, they don't wanna deal with all of these hoops and loops to get the house sold. They just want the path of least resistance. So most of them are probably just gonna to choose to lower the price if they're serious about selling. And home builders are going through great lengths right now to get these houses sold, you know? They're building smaller houses. That saves them a little bit of money, actually, too. They're doing mortgage rate buy downs you know they're de-amenitizing the house with cheaper appliances and floors and countertops cheaper roof no deck in the backyard lots of different things that they can skimp on in order to save some money and the crazy thing is is we are seeing the median sales price of these brand new homes down 18 percent year over year that does not include 
all these incentives and the mortgage rate buy downs. And you know, these mortgage rate buy downs on average cost the home builder at least 20 to 30 grand most times, okay? So you can knock an extra 20 to 30 grand off the real price of what these houses are actually selling for. So in reality, these home prices are actually down by probably more than 20%, guys. That's a crash. And even with all these incentives, here's the crazy part. Check out this graph right here. This goes to show you how many brand new single family homes were selling back before the last housing crash, which was far higher than today, right? Well, fast forward to today, we're starting to see that the amount of sales is already at the regular trend line of what it normally is. And it's about to dip below that just like it did during the pandemic, just like it did during the last housing crash. But here's the other interesting thing though. Even though the sales of these houses is coming down, we can see that the amount of them being built is still going up. In fact, a little correction from earlier, as of October of 2023, there's actually 8.8 .8 months of supply on the current new single family home market, guys. That's even higher than it was the last time I reported on this. Before it was at six to seven months, now it's at almost nine months. And remember, there's still another 988, 968,000 building permits that are being applied for right now. So where do you think this is all gonna go? But you know what? These home builders are smart because they're getting ahead of it. They're selling these houses now while people can still buy them. With the, these mortgage rate buy downs, they're able to still turn a profit and they're able to essentially steer the market right now, which is good news for them, but it's gonna be bad news for sellers who, you know, been thinking that, oh, I'm just gonna continue waiting and waiting and I'll be able to sell my house for, you know, higher than ever before. That's not going to be the case with all this new inventory coming to the market because these home builders are competing with existing home sellers and the rental market. And guess what? They're winning. And here's what DR Horton has to say about all this. They say that to adjust to the changing market conditions and higher mortgage rates, we have increased our use of incentives and are reducing the size of our homes where possible to provide better affordability for our home buyers. We expect to continue utilizing a higher level of incentives in fiscal 2024, particularly rate buy downs in the current interest rate environment. The average rate can move quite a bit through the quarter, but we tend to stay about one to 1.25 points below the market at any given time. So you heard it directly from them that these home builders have no sign of slowing down, guys. They're gonna continue offering massive incentives in 2024 to get these houses sold. And if you don't think it's gonna affect the price of existing homes, think again. Because they're saying that 60% of their total closings are used with some form of a rate buy-down which is the most successful incentive that we have seen so far. So typically the only way that existing home sellers are gonna be able to compete with this is either offer your own rate buy down or lower the price, but it's all the same. They say that our buyers are focused primarily on affordability and for us, the way we deliver that affordability is through the monthly payment process. And that's obviously been a big driver for the rate buy downs. And by de-amenitizing the homes, we can give people more flexibility and they can do upgrades to the house themselves once they move in. And once again, half of the business for these home builders right now are first time home buyers. Literally half of all the people who are buying these brand new houses, first time home buyers, guys. So with the amount of inventory that these guys are gonna be bringing to the market, both with the rentals and the for sale market, I expect a big shift in prices for both rentals and for houses for sale coming in the future. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you don't wanna wait for my next video to come out, check out this one on the screen right over here, and I'll see you in the next one.